In this video, I'll show you a great conversation I had with Director of Jazz Studies at the University of Utah and trumpeter Chris Johnson. Stay tuned for the entire video. He gives us his seven steps to learning a jazz standard and shows us a little glimpse of his process. What up y'all and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Aaron. I post helpful trumpet tutorials, practice tips, and play along exercises that just helps people learn how to play the trumpet so we can have more fun playing music on this instrument. If you're interested in that, then I encourage you to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any new videos. All right, let's get started with the video. Man, so for me, what I always try to tell people is I think the first thing you need to do is fall in love with the song. So for me, it's just listening to as many recordings as possible, making a playlist and just like binging on that song. Once you've done that, you kind of start to build a, a relationship with the tune and you start to really have an idea of how you feel about the tune and how you initially react to it before you're told something from a lead sheet, before somebody describes it to you. You have a personal relationship with the tune. That's really key. Then from there, I try to pick either my favorite version or oftentimes the version that resonates with me, you know, the version that resonates with me the most or like the most popular version. So for example, if I'm checking out Autumn Leaves, there's a million recordings of Autumn Leaves, but the one I really want to make sure I check out is that Cannonball Adderley one with Miles Davis. That's like the quintessential version of Autumn Leaves, right? So I want to make sure that I'm listening to that one and basing my, my learning off of that version. So that's step one is just kind of like locking into recordings and deciding specifically which version I want to, I want to learn. When you're listening to different versions, of the tune does it matter if the version is not in the original key for me it's like i do want to be aware of especially as a trumpet player i want to be aware of the key that most people expect to play it in and that's the version i'm going to learn but when i'm listening i listen to every every version i can find i can bring ideas out of every version it doesn't necessarily have to be the one that's in b flat major g minor you know i hear often that in order for us to learn a jazz standard in its purest form uh we should learn it from a singer what do you think about that definitely man if, if it's a if it's a song that has lyrics it's very important to check out a version that has lyrics for me uh, Nat King Cole and Ella, those are the type of artists that I want to go to to like learn that melody in its pure form. You know what I mean? Yeah. As much as I can, I want to at least memorize as much of the lyrics as possible so that I know like the message of the song and, and what it's conveying. So the next step for me is I want to learn both the form and the melody. So I want to be aware if the form is AAB, if it's AABA, etc. Is it a blues? Is it rhythm changes? Just be aware of how many bars the form is and be able to hear when the top of the form comes back around in the middle of the improvisation. So usually those two things work together because the melody is going to dictate what the form is. Now, when I learn the melody, I think the best way is find a recording that really appeals to you, or like we had talked about, the standard recording, and then learn that melody by ear directly from the recording. What that achieves is it gets you it gets you closer to the recording. If you jump immediately to a lead sheet, then you're trusting the, the phrasing that's written down on that page and you're reading and you're not picking up on the timbre of the sound, on the rhythm, on the inflection. That's what makes the song what it is, is the way in which it's being played. So for me, learning, learning the melody by ear and trying to match that artist exactly is really key. Now that's not to say that's the only way you can learn a tune, but I think especially in the beginning when you're still learning the phrasing, it's very important to do that. Gotcha. Okay, so you listen to a whole bunch of recordings, then you picked your favorite one, and you learned the melody and the form. So what's next after that? The next thing for me is harmony. Ideally, I'd sit down with the recording and learn the chord changes by ear. Now, depending on how advanced you are, depending on what level you're at, that's gonna be either more difficult or not, but you wanna do that as much as you can. Just figure out the harmony. Don't be afraid to use a resource, like iReal Pro is, has a list of a bunch of chord changes, um, your yes. fake books, etc. But take that all with a grain of salt and check it against the recording. Play the chord change against the particular recording you're learning because they might be doing a variation or the real book might have gotten it wrong. You wanna make sure you fact check as much as possible with your melody and with your harmony. So what if you go to a jam session and the band is not playing the changes that you learned? So that's part of it is that we have to be moldable and we have to be prepared for the fact that we fall in love with this one version of the song that's on this one recording. Yeah. One of the reasons we listen to so many versions is there's so many different variations. And my favorite version might be one recording, but somebody yeah. else's when they play this on a gig might be a different one. And they're playing off those chord changes. So by being aware of as many recordings as possible, that's how we get to know the history of the music. And that's how we get to really be able to lock in into what those variations are. And we have to be flexible. So with that, I would say just being aware of like what different substitutions are is important. But if we're talking about just the basics of learning it, then this is a great place to start. And there's definitely more things we can add on to the package later. So for your preference, do you mainly learn the tune on the trumpet or the piano? Or is there a little bit of both? I try to learn, like if I'm learning, transcribing the melody or a solo, 
I want to learn that on trumpet, match the phrase and get the tone. But then when it comes to harmony, I'm using the piano. So what's your process of really ingraining the harmony into your playing? So that's my next step, actually. So the first thing for me is I want to understand the function of every single chord that I'm dealing with. I want to actually be able to sit down and analyze the chord progression so that I understand the roadmap and why those chords are there. Because a lot of these jazz standards that we're dealing with are dealing with functional harmony and are dealing with harmony that makes sense. Like this, this chord is there because it serves a purpose. I think it's important for students to understand the purpose of that chord so they can feel like the direction that it's being pulled in. So what I make my students do is we're learning autumn leaves. We'll actually go through the form and just say two, five, one. Oh, okay. Four, two of six, five of six, six. And wow. to really understand like every single bar. Every single bar. Every single bar, know how those chords are interacting with each other. That's really cool because I can see how you can get a deeper understanding of the original key and also use that to transpose it to different keys. Yeah, that and two, when a student's on F7, I don't want them thinking, okay, I have to play C minor seven sounds. Okay, done. Now it's time to play F minor seven. So, you know, yeah. no man. Like if I'm playing C minor seven to F seven to B flat, I'm playing B flat. The whole purpose of those three bars is to get me to B flat. And when I hit that E flat, that's just passing me on to move on to to tonicize the six. Yeah. So that that's really key for me is to sit down and really be able to analyze the progression and know where you're headed. And then also too, you get to you get to see the patterns that happen in every single tune. Because there's only like there's like a couple of things that happen in almost every single song. So starting to study those patterns, and I usually name them. And it's not so much like, oh, this is what everybody calls it, as much as for me, if I notice this chord progression keeps coming up, I want to build a relationship with that progression because it's going to pop up yes. in like every single standard. Nice. Okay, so you create a concept after you analyze it so you can recognize it in other standards. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So the next is chords, scales, and voice leading. All I'm trying to do is actually practice arpeggiating those. I'm going to practice the chords. <laughs> Make sure I can go through the whole form, ideally by memory, and really be able to feel, okay, I know the function of all these chords and I know the basic notes that are in them. And then have access to those descending. And then alternate. Once I get a hold of that of the whole form, now I own those chord changes on my instrument. It's not theoretical anymore. Like I actually like know the notes that are assigned to them and that's obviously just the basics. But right now, that's what I wanna know. The next thing for me is gonna be voice leading is how do the thirds and sevenths of that progression react to each other? So for gotcha. me, what's happening with any particular chord to try to create the smoothest pattern as I'm moving through. That first chord, I'm gonna take the third and the seventh. And then when I move to the F7, I'm gonna go from the seventh to the third. And then B flat back to the third and seventh. And then when I get to the E flat, the seventh and the third. So now what I want to be able to do is go through the whole form and play through that smooth third to seventh voice lead. So now I feel like I have a better sense of how that harmony is interacting with the form. Those guiding tones are in my ear and I have a better sense of like the layout of the song. In the same way, practicing the scales. Um, for me, I like to keep it as simple as possible in the beginning. Like I like to just have a basic relationship with like a basic scale I can play unless the melody shows me that there's another note I should be conscious of. So from the top. Obviously, G minor in the key of B flat could easily just be G Aeolian, right? right? But because of that classic bass line that they play on that Miles Davis recording, that makes me feel like, okay, it's very important that I play Dorian. It's very important I have that natural six. So when I get to bar seven and eight, so for me, I'm going to go through the whole form, play them all going up, play them all coming down, alternate ascending, descending, you know. Just 
try to get those under my fingers, man, so that they feel, I want them to feel normal. I want it to just, just feel natural. like, yeah, I want it to feel natural. I want it to be a regular part of my thinking. And I want to have access to all that here. You know, yeah, yeah, I want yeah. all that to have, you know, just be normal for me. So how would you apply everything that you've learned so far to practicing improvisation? So the next part for me is take all that and just put it aside for a second. Like I've been, I've been, I've been nerdy enough, right? I checked out the recording. I learned some things from the recording. I checked out that melody. I learned the chord changes. I just practice what I learned from the recording. Now the tendency for a lot of people is like, oh, well take this pattern and do this or take this. For me, it's more about what were people dealing with on these recordings? What did our forefathers of this music have in mind as they were improvising? And how does that relate to the theory that I just learned? And I'm not afraid to cancel out what I just learned theoretically for what's on the recording because the recording is the truth. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So for me, the next thing would be, so I'm gonna start transcribing an accessible solo in this key, and then I wanna line it up. I go ahead and write it out four bars per system, put the chord changes above, and then I start checking out like, okay, how are they using the thirds and sevenths? Or what scale did he play over this bar? Or what kind of chord did he outline? Or what is this melody that he created? And because I'm familiar with the scales, chords, and voice leading, I'm able to, uh, I can easily understand what I'm seeing in front of me. What I hear that artist do, I have access to. And I'm like, man, I notice every time on that F7, he played a G flat. Every time on our G7, he played that A flat. Well, why is that there? Well, what's the relationship between that G7 and that A flat? Oh, that's a flat nine. So now for me in my practicing, if I'm noticing that like Miles Davis is doing that every time, just as an example, then I want to update my practicing and try to incorporate that flat nine. So I have access to that. And then I want to learn that line and start applying that line everywhere I can. So I want to take that information and put it over as many chord changes as I can so I can have an understanding of, of the vocabulary that he was dealing with. So I think it's a really important to go back to the source and check out the recording, analyze what they're doing in the recording, and then use it. Borrow it, steal it, whatever you want to call it. Professor Johnson, this was great stuff. Where else can we follow you and learn more about you? I oh, appreciate it, man. Thanks so much for having me, man. I really appreciate it. So my website is really simple. It's just chrisjohnsonmusic.com. And that Chris is spelled K-R-I-S. And I'm also on social media, always under the handle Chris Johnson Music on Instagram and Facebook as well. If you learned one thing from this video, then hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. Oh, and also don't forget to comment below and share with the community if you have your own tips and your own process for learning a new tune. I love to hear your thoughts and your process. Again, I just want to thank Professor Johnson for taking the time out to share his knowledge and his experience with me and the channel. He has his own YouTube channel. It's called Office Hours with Chris Johnson, and I'll provide a link in the description box below. There also should be a card that pops up you guys need to subscribe to this channel because he has some great content over there that i know you guys will enjoy so thank you for watching i'm aaron the black trumpeter and i'll see you in the next video okay so before we get out of here i just want to give a quick shout out to my new patreon members and supporters john walker and o'shea duke jackson thank you so much for supporting the channel i really do appreciate it um for you guys that aren't members yet uh don't worry my my videos will always continue to be free it's just for those that that, that feel inclined to support the channel in any way i just want to thank you in advance and um take care guys and bless